Hey YouTube, Common Collector here, and today I am bringing you guys my Red Eyes Dark Dragoon Rocket Dragon Link deck. Now this is actually, I believe, uh, you know, this card already came out way back in August, and I believe that this is my first deck profile featuring the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. However, uh, up until now, I didn't really feel like splashing it in with the Rocket Dragon Link deck, but now that Link Cross, as well as um, the Dragon Buster Destruction Sword got hit, I finally felt like it was time, so without further ado, let's Let's just get right on into the deck profile. So this is going to be the competitive non-budget version. I do have a budget version of this deck up on the channel as well. So if you guys want to check that out, link will be down in the description below. But we are playing, of course, the three mandatory rocket tracers. This card just helps you to start off your combos and stuff. It is it is a, uh, a turn starter as well as an extender. So he's really great. Then we're going on into our two copies of Rocket Recharger. Uh, it's almost like a little bit of a hand trap for the deck, so it is nice to be playing at least at two. Uh, I haven't said this yet, so I should tell you, this is the 60 card build, which is going to help you to minimize the, the amount of times that you're going to be seeing the bricks, because there are quite a bit of bricks with the uh, the Dragon Link side of things, as well as the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon side of things. So anyways, going on, we have the one Silver Rocket Dragon. One Auto Rocket, one Metal Rocket Dragon, a Magna Rocket Dragon, and then lastly for our Rocket Monsters, we have one Rocket Synchron. Uh, just again, like another, um, you know, just started for the turn. All these guys can be normal summoned, and then also he can uh, extend if you're going for more of a grindy duel. Then lastly, to finish off the Rocket Engine, we have two copies of Absa Router Dragon. It would be nice to bump this up to three just because this is a 60 card build, but in general, uh, there are plenty of ways to search for rockets. So if you see this in your opening hand and then you can find a way to search for a rocket monster to get it on the field, then you can go ahead and special the Absa Router from your hand. So in general, I still like playing it at at least two. So I run a pretty large rocket engine just because again, this is the 60 card build. So you want to make sure that you're seeing uh, at least one or hopefully two in your opening hand. That way you can special summon off of that boot sector launch and that's going to really help you to extend in your turn. Then we're going on into our three copies of Star Leech Cypher. Thankfully this got a reprint in the Megatons. So overall this deck really isn't super expensive. Obviously your Red Eyes Dark Dragoon is going to be pushing the budget a little bit. I would say that this is like a uh, a two to three hundred dollar deck, maybe a little bit even less than uh, two hundred dollars. Um, then we're going to go on into our Black Metal Dragon. So this card just really helps you to extend and do more searching. Uh, it works really well in sync with the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. So that's kind of why I figured that it was splashable enough for this deck because this card can, uh, in a pinch, it can search your, uh, you know, like your Red Eyes Fusion and your uh, Red Eyes Wyvern, or just in general, just going for a search on your Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. Then for my, basically my favorite extender for the deck, which is Noctivision Dragon. So what this card does is that when you link summon, then you can special summon this card. And then if this card gets linked away, then you can uh, draw one card, which is super duper nice. Or, uh, sorry, for the first effect, you don't need to uh, link summon. You just have to special summon a dark dragon monster. But in general, I usually uh, find myself summoning this after I summon my striker dragon. Then we're going to go on into the one light and the one dark dragon. So I do play quite a bit of light attributes yet in the deck to uh, complement the black dragon collapse serpent. But these two cards are just super nice for extending in the deck. Like when you can get their effects off, you are going to be going full combo for sure. Then we have the one dra uh, chaos dragon levianir, one omni dragon brotar. He's just really nice to special summon out of the deck or pitch to the graveyard if you have other means. So he's pretty versatile in what you can do. The one Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon and the one Red Eyes Wyvern. This card is super nice. So for those of you guys who don't know why you play the Red Eyes Wyvern with the Dragoon combo is that with this card, if you don't normal summon or set a monster this turn, then you can banish this from your graveyard in order to special summon a Red Eyes monster from your graveyard. So if you've already gone full Dragoon combo, then uh, you get this set up in your graveyard. Then if your opponent seems to be kind of taking over the game state, then you can go ahead and bring back your Red Eyes Dark Dragoon with the Wyvern as long as you don't normal summon or set. And we do a fair bit of special summoning for this deck. So overall, that's not going to be too hard. Then we have the uh, one Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storms. 
He was just sort of like my last pick for my last final extender for the deck. Uh, and I ended up cutting the uh, Dimension Dragon because overall, I just, like I really like Dimension Dragon, especially as a budget option. But I just needed to add an extra rocket. So I think that that was how the, um, the Metal Rocket found its way into the deck because I just needed more rockets and no more normal summonable monsters. Then we have the one Dragoonity Phalanx, and then for our final monsters of the deck, we have the Dark Magician and Red Eyes Black Dragon. Then, uh, I guess just for more monsters, we still have Hand Traps. So we have the three Ash Blossom, just because it's our most generic Hand Trap. The uh, three Ghost Ogre, I really like Ghost Ogre because it is a light attribute, and it can trigger off your Unchained Abominations. That's why I really, really like it in this deck. And then just two copies of Effect Veiler. Um, so right here we are playing, um, I believe that is eight hand traps. And then for our next three, we just have three copies of infinite impermanence. So, uh, just to get the traps out of the way, we have our three infinite impermanence, which leads us to having 11 hand traps, which means that you should likely see at least one in your opening hand. I just, uh, that was just sort of the ratio that I really liked working with. You could bump it up a little bit, but, uh, Nibiru would be like a good side deck card. I couldn't really justify playing side frame gear gamma in the main deck. Uh, you know, I just didn't really find myself wanting to play it for this build. So I thought that, uh, those other three hand traps or these, these four hand traps were the, uh, the best ones along with the effect veiler. So for the spells, we have our three quick launch. This card just really helps to get your rockets out of the deck and extend. Then we have our three copies of World Legacy Guard Dragon. You could bump this down to two, but since this is, again, the 60-card build, I like playing the three just so you make sure that you can see it a little bit more often because when this card uh, goes off, it is super-duper nice to be able to move around your link zones and obviously as a free Monster Reborn. Then we have our three copies of Chaos Space. This card is absolutely ridiculous. And uh, I could definitely see this getting hit on a ban list in the future just because of how good it is for the Chaos Monsters. Like, we already have the white and black dragons uh, limited, and so I don't really know why they give us this card to search them out when, like, Dragon Link and stuff is just so powerful. Then we have our two copies of Boot Sector Launch. You never want to play less than two because we're playing our two Striker Dragon, and even when you hard draw this, this card is just still really nice. Uh, our one copy of Dragon Ravine, one copy of Dragoonity, Divine Lance, one World Legacy Succession. I see that not a lot of people play this, but, I mean, there are just so many times where you have that one open uh, monster zone where your link monster is pointing to where you really, really want to extend. And then like that can help you to go into your uh, your LP or your Pisty. So I, I really, really like that in the deck. One Monster Reborn, one One for One, one Called by the Grave because like there's still no reason to not play Called by the Grave. Uh, especially if you're combo. Uh, I didn't really find room for triple tactical talents in here, but you really don't need that. Uh, the called by the grave is just still nice. If your opponent hand traps you, boom, called by the grave, negate it. Like, obviously this deck can play through hand traps, but I mean, if you can negate it, why not? And then for our uh, 60th card of the deck, the one red eyes fusion to get out our dragoon. But now let's get on into the extra deck. So for the extra deck we were playing, of course, the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. I mean, it can pop stuff. It can negate stuff. Really big boy. Uh, you know, like, there's a lot of people who love this card. I hate this card, you know, to be honest, like, just for uh, the card design. But, you know, if the card is legal and it works so good in here, then I'm going to play it. Uh, the one argument that I really like that Cali effect made with this uh, card back when he was playing it in his Dragon League deck is that if your opponent hand traps you and you only have enough extension to get, like, two monsters on board, then you just take those two monsters and go into your Predaplant Verte Anaconda and then you go with, you know, send your Red Eyes Fusion to the graveyard, and then you get Dragoon. So it's like, yeah, like, you know, if your opponent hand traps you enough, like, then you just basically need to get out two monsters, Verda Anaconda, and then boom, you have the Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, which, again, is why I just don't like the card design of this card with how easy it is to get out, especially with the Anaconda. So I think that at some point like Anaconda or Dragoon needs to get hit or the Red Eyes Fusion. But, you know, while it's still legal, I think you got to play it. And again, like you get at least two monsters on board, then you just have your combo there. Otherwise, if you can go full combo, then sometimes I don't even touch this. There are definitely duels where I don't touch this. Dark Dragoon is not the main focus of the deck. It's just like an extra little spice. But if you don't like this, you could uh, put in like 
Alpalooza and Halka Fibrax in here and it would work. I did take Halka Fibrax out of the extra deck just because I didn't really have space. But we have our two copies of Striker Dragon to search our boot sector launches. And he's just really nice for like getting stuff off the field. That way, like, you know, you have like, if you only have like one normal summonable monster, then you summon that, use Striker Dragon, and then use like a uh, World Legacy Guard Dragon in order to um, bring that monster back. And now you can go into a Link 2 play which is just really, really good. The one Guard Dragon LP and the one Pisty. I'm playing one copy of the Lindris Dragon and the Quad Boral Dragon because these cards just uh, are basically a free synchro monster. So, um, you know, if you're able to go into these two guys on the field, then that obviously means that you could have summoned a Link 4. But as long as you have you know, two of your rockets in the graveyard, including your rocket tracer, then that means that you have uh, your eight levels in the graveyard. So you get these two guys out, discard for quad borals effect, then you, your Delindra's Dragon goes to the graveyard. It special summons itself back to the field once your two rocket monsters hit the field. You then take these two guys to go into your uh, Unchained Abomination or whatever you want. And then you can then, from there, uh, Synchro Summon into a Synchro 8, which is generally going to be uh, Boralode Savage Dragon. So overall, I just really like playing these two in the deck. They could be cut if you don't like it, but... Uh, you know, like they're kind of like a win more combo, but I still really like them because they help you to extend, which is basically the whole purpose of like the whole deck is just to keep extending further. Then we have obviously our mandatory one, uh, Dragoonity Knight Romulus, the one Hieratic Seal, one Unchained Abomination, one Boral Sword Dragon, one Opelousa. Again, I, I couldn't fit Crystron Halka Fibrax in here. Uh, but like basically like Halka Fibrax does help you to extend further into stuff like Opelousa, but uh, I just couldn't really find space for it in the extra deck. We have the one Boralode Savage and then one of the Draco Berserker of the Tenyi. Uh, this theoretically could get replaced for the Halka Fibrax, but I really liked having the second option. If you can't go full combo into like Boral Sword Dragon to OTK, then sometimes your Draco Berserker can kind of do the same thing and he's a good disruption. So overall that's going to do it for the deck. Uh, I don't really have a side deck necessarily set up. However, obviously stuff like Nibiru, Lightning Storm, uh, Triple Tactical Talents could get put in here, but overall, like, yeah, your Nibiru and your Evenly Matched uh, Dark Ruler No More, all that kind of stuff would want to be included in here. But anyways, guys, that is going to do it for my Rocket Guard Dragon Red Eyes Dark Dragoon deck. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to, to subscribe if you haven't already. Click the like button and uh, let me know in the comments what you guys thought or if you guys have already built this deck. Uh, catch you guys later. Common Collector out.